Imagine diving into the depths of the Sea of Galilee to uncover secrets that challenge everything we thought we knew about ancient civilizations and biblical legends. Buried deep beneath the tranquil waters of this sea lies a mystery that has baffled scholars and believers for ages. But this mystery has finally led us to one of the most speculated parts of our history, the Moses tomb. I have questions about the end of the story of Moses. If there is a historical Moses, where is this guy? I mean, where was he buried? Get ready to dive into a story that will captivate your imagination. In the depths of the Sea of Galilee, where the waters whisper ancient secrets and the sands hold untold mysteries, a team of intrepid researchers embarked on a quest unlike any other. Guided by the insatiable curiosity of Expedition Unknown's Josh Gates and fueled by the determination of a dedicated team of experts, they set out to unravel the enigma hidden beneath the waves, a mysterious structure that may hold the key to unlocking the secrets of ancient history and biblical narratives. Obviously, this isn't a magic rock that followed the Israelites through the desert, but, you know, is it possible that this is connected to the story of Exodus? What they discovered beneath the tranquil surface of the Sea of Galilee defied explanation, challenging our understanding of the past and beckoning us to explore the realms of faith, history, and archaeological pursuit. But the journey did not end there. From the sacred halls of Nabi Musa to the windswept slopes of Mount Nebo, the quest to uncover the truth behind Moses' final resting place led us on a pilgrimage through time and tradition where every step unearthed new insights and raised profound questions about the nature of belief and the mysteries that endure. In the heart of the Sea of Galilee, amidst the gentle lapping of waves, researchers embarked on a groundbreaking seismic experiment. Their mission is clear, to uncover the secrets hidden beneath the waters and shed light on a mysterious structure that may hold the key to ancient history and biblical narratives. The team is on a journey to uncover the truth that lies hidden deep beneath the Sea of Galilee and what appears to be the Well of Miriam, the mysterious structure in the Sea of Galilee. The mysterious structure was first detected by archaeologists in the summer of 2003 during a sonar survey of the southwest portion of the Sea of Galilee, and divers have since been down to investigate. The team of scientists began their investigation to trace the source of small stones found in the Sea of Galilee. They suspected these stones were washed into the sea by an ancient stream called Yavnil Creek, which once flowed into the Jordan River. Using special equipment to scan the lake bed, they noticed a large heap of rocks amidst the otherwise flat lake floor. Intrigued by this unusual discovery, Professor Marco decided to dive into the water for a closer look. Upon inspection, they realized that the heap of rocks was not just a random collection, but a deliberately constructed structure made of volcanic rocks known as basalt each about three feet long. They found a huge stone structure that looked like a cone. This structure is made of rough, uncut rocks called basalt cobbles and boulders. It's so heavy, weighing around 60,000 tons, which is even heavier than many big warships we see today. This stone structure stands really tall, almost reaching 32 feet high, and it's really wide, with a diameter of about 230 feet. To compare, the circle of stones at Stonehenge, a famous site in England, is only half as wide, and the stones there are not as tall as this underwater structure. Upon closer examination by scuba diving, the researchers observed that the structure consists of basalt boulders, some measuring up to one meter, three, two feet in length. They noted that there was no discernible pattern in how the boulders were arranged, and they appeared to have natural faces without any signs of being cut or chiseled. Additionally, there were no walls or clear boundaries defining the structure. Based on their findings, the researchers concluded that the structure was definitely made by humans and was likely constructed on land originally. 
Since the nearest place where these rocks naturally occur is over a mile away, the researchers believe that someone intentionally brought them to this spot to build the structure. Various theories have been proposed to explain the purpose of the structure, ranging from ancient calendars to ceremonial sites. Some even suggest it could have been used for sky burial, where mounds to be consumed by vultures. However, what adds to the mystery is the absence of any archaeological evidence indicating the presence of a nearby city. This has led some to speculate that the structure might be a massive monument with symbolic meaning. Over time, as the water level of the Sea of Galilee rose, the structure became submerged. The researchers emphasized that the shape and composition of the underwater structure do not resemble any natural features found in the area. Therefore, they believe it is man-made and could be described as a cairn. From a geophysical perspective, the discovery of the underwater structure holds significant implications for understanding the history of the Sea of Galilee. The fact that the structure appears submerged beneath the water suggests that the lake's water level was lower in ancient times compared to its current state. This revelation opens a window into the past, offering insights into the environmental changes that have occurred over centuries. The structure itself presents a captivating sight, resembling a massive pile of rocks meticulously stacked atop each other, akin to what is commonly known as a rock cairn. These types of formations are not uncommon in various parts of the world and are often associated with cultural or religious practices, including marking burial sites or delineating sacred spaces. However, despite the striking resemblance to such structures, researchers at the time of discovery remained uncertain about the specific purpose of the one found in the Sea of Galilee. The ambiguity surrounding its intended function adds an air of mystery to the findings, prompting further exploration and investigation into the ancient civilizations that once inhabited the region and their possible connections to the enigmatic structure hidden beneath the lake's seismic survey. To find the answers and resolve the mystery, I like this. Okay, fire it again. To get a clear digital picture of what lies in the murky waters, Josh Gates and his team designed a seismic survey. A seismic survey is a type of geophysical investigation used to measure the properties of the Earth using various physical principles such as magnetism, electricity, gravity, heat, and elasticity. It relies on the theory of elasticity to infer the elastic properties of materials. By observing how they respond to seismic waves, which are disturbances that travel through the Earth's crust. Seismic surveys are vital in industries like oil and gas exploration, where companies need to know what lies beneath the Earth's surface. By sending seismic waves deep into the ground and recording their reflections, scientists can create detailed maps showing the layers of rock and other materials below the surface. This information is crucial for locating valuable resources like oil and gas reserves. Equipped with advanced technology and unwavering determination, the team deployed seismic air guns, a vital tool in their quest for knowledge. These guns, resembling large cylinders, were designed to release powerful bursts of compressed air into the depths below. As the air guns fired, the tranquil surface of the sea erupted into a flurry of activity. The bursts of high-pressure air plunged into the water, creating shockwaves that reverberated through the seabed with remarkable force. Accompanying the air guns were sensors strategically positioned to capture the echoes of these shockwaves as they bounced off submerged structures. These sensors acted as silent sentinels, diligently recording every ripple and reverberation that traveled through the sea. With each burst of compressed air, the sensors sprang into action, meticulously capturing the data needed to unravel the mysteries of the underwater world. The process was repetitive, yet crucial. As researchers sought to gather a comprehensive data set from various angles and depths, 
As the researchers carried out their experiment, they were surrounded by a mix of sounds and quiet paying close attention to the underwater world's subtle details. Each time the air guns fired, they moved closer to revealing the secrets hidden beneath the ocean floor. Days passed as the team persisted in their efforts, despite the challenges of working in such a vast body of water. They stayed focused and determined, driven by the hope of making new discoveries. Finally, when the last echoes faded away, the seismic experiment came to an end. The data they collected had the potential to uncover the mysterious structure that had remained hidden for so long, offering insights into the past and the tales it held. In the lab, scientists carefully looked at all the data collected during the underwater experiment. They examined every wave and sound echo very closely, trying to understand the hidden details of the structure underwater. After a lot of careful studying and analyzing, the scientists created a 3D picture of what was under the water. This picture gave them a peek into the past, showing how old the structure was, what it was made of, and why it might have been built. As they looked at the results, they got a clear idea of what the ancient world might have looked like under the sea. The structure, which used to be a big mystery, was now fully visible, and its secrets were out in the open. This is a higher resolution image of the structure, and what is important here to see is that some of the reflection comes from the structure which is buried by sediments. The seismic experiment didn't just show the size and shape of the underwater structure, it also gave clues about its importance in history. This structure might have a connection to Miriam's Well. Miriam's Well. Miriam's Well is a legendary source of water that is believed to have miraculously provided for the Jewish people during their travels through the desert after the exodus from Egypt. As the Israelites, guided by Moses, journeyed through the wilderness of Shur shortly after their miraculous crossing of the Red Sea, they faced a dire challenge, a scarcity of water. For three long days, they traversed the barren landscape with parched throats and dwindling hope, their desperate search yielding no relief. However, their fortunes took a turn when they arrived at Mara, where they discovered a source of water. Yet, to their dismay, the waiter was bitter and undrinkable, further intensifying their plight. In their desperation, the Israelites turned to Moses, their leader and intermediary with the divine, seeking a solution to their predicament. Responding to their plea, Moses sought guidance from God, who instructed him to throw a piece of wood into the bitter waters. Trusting in the divine command, Moses cast the wood into the pool, and in a miraculous display of God's power, the once bitter water transformed into a sweet, refreshing liquid, fit for consumption. According to Jewish tradition, it was named after Miriam, the older sister of Moses and Aaron, who was considered a righteous woman and a prophetess. Miriam, who played a significant role in the Exodus story, became a symbol of divine sustenance and miraculous intervention. Miriam's role in Moses' life and the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt is multifaceted and pivotal. One notable instance is when she watches over her baby brother Moses as he lies hidden among the bulrushes along the banks of the Nile. Their mother, fearing Pharaoh's decree to kill all Hebrew male infants, ingeniously places Moses in a basket and sets it adrift on the river. Miriam keeps a careful eye on the basket, ensuring Moses remains safe from harm. Miriam's vigilance and protective instincts demonstrate her deep love for her brother and her commitment to preserving his life, even in the face of great danger. Her courage in the midst of adversity underscores her importance as a key figure in the narrative of Moses' early life. Furthermore, Miriam's actions symbolize the resilience and resourcefulness of the Hebrew people in the face of oppression. 
By taking proactive measures to safeguard Moses, Miriam's she exemplifies the determination of the Israelites to defy Pharaoh's cruel edicts and preserve their heritage. Indeed, the story of Moses, Miriam, and Aaron stands as a testament to the power of faith in God. Perseverance and divine intervention, guided by their unwavering commitment to God's commandments and their deep love for their people. These three figures played pivotal roles in leading the Israelites from the depths of slavery in Egypt to the heights of freedom in the promised land. I am the God of thy father, the guide of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The well is said to have existed in her merit, symbolizing her unwavering faith and devotion to God. During that time, the Jews were sustained by water from Miriam's well that accompanied them throughout their journey. This water supply was crucial for their survival in the parched and barren desert environment for 40 years. According to ancient Jewish stories, the well wasn't a typical water source, but a special rock that traveled with the Israelites during their journey through the desert. When they stopped to rest, the rock would sink into the sand, and the leaders of each tribe would approach it, asking it to produce water. In response, water would miraculously spring forth from the rock, providing the people with the water they needed. Some interpretations suggest that the rock didn't physically move with them, but rather the water flowed from it wherever they stopped. Toward the end of the Israelites' sojourn in the desert, and just months before entering the Holy Land, the entire congregation of the children of Israel arrived at the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people settled in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. After the death of Miriam, the well dried and the congregation had no water to drink and was faced with a critical water shortage. Miriam's well ceased to function after her death as a test of faith for the Jewish people. It symbolized the transition from Miriam's era to a new phase where a different demonstration of faith was required. After the well dried, the people were faced with a critical water shortage, so they assembled against Moses and Aaron. Haba besieged Moses and demanded that he provide water for them, for otherwise they would die. God told Moses to take his staff in hand and speak to the rock. Instead of speaking, however, Moses struck the rock with his staff. The waters gushed forth again, but Moses forfeited the opportunity to enter the Holy Land. The act of Moses speaking to the rock was meant to exemplify complete reliance on God's word and the power of speech. Moses' failure to adhere to God's instructions by striking the rock instead of speaking to it resulted in consequences. The result, the story of the Exodus, a core narrative in Jewish, Christian, and Islamic traditions, recounts the liberation of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and their subsequent journey through the desert under the guidance of Moses. While traditionally believed to have occurred during the Late Bronze Age, scholars have debated the historical accuracy and timing of this account. The recent discovery of the structure in the Sea of Galilee provides a fresh perspective on the region's history during the Bronze Age and its potential link to the biblical narrative of the Exodus. This finding introduces a new element to our understanding of ancient events and their possible connections to religious stories. As the researchers delved deeper into their analysis, they unearthed compelling evidence indicating that the enigmatic structure predated back to the Bronze Age, approximately 407 years ago. This revelation ignited a surge of excitement among the team, hinting at a potential historical connection to the biblical narrative of Exodus and the legendary tale of Miriam's well. Through meticulous examination, the three-dimensional image unveiled the intricate details of the underwater anomaly, unveiling its colossal proportions and meticulous craftsmanship. It became unmistakably clear that this structure was not a product of natural forces, but rather a testament to human ingenuity, deliberately constructed and strategically positioned on the seabed. While the archaeologists hypothesized that it was initially built on dry land before becoming submerged by the lake, 
pinpointing the exact age of the structure presents a formidable challenge, underscoring the complexity of this remarkable discovery. The researchers marveled at the sheer magnitude of the structure, composed of basalt boulders meticulously stacked atop one another. Its presence on the seafloor was a testament to the ingenuity and skill of its builders. Raising questions about its purpose and significance in ancient times, despite uncertainties about its exact purpose, archaeologists are confident that the monument held significant importance for its creators. The closest source of basalt rock was several hundred meters away from the site, indicating that transporting the stones, which could weigh over 90 kilograms at times and measure one to two meters in width, would have required considerable effort and resources. The discovery of this mysterious underwater structure raised more questions than answers prompting the researchers to contemplate its possible connection to the biblical legend of Miriam's well. Could this enigmatic structure hold the key to unlocking ancient secrets buried beneath the waves? With their curiosity piqued, the researchers recognized that their journey had only just begun. The next step would involve further investigation to uncover what lay inside the structure a daunting task that promised to reveal even more about this intriguing archaeological find, the enduring quest to uncover the final resting place of Moses, has captivated humanity for centuries, embodying a profound fusion of faith, history, and the relentless pursuit of archaeological truth. Moses stands as a towering figure in the tapestry of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, weaving together the religious and cultural narratives of these diverse faiths. His remarkable journey from the miraculous circumstances of his infancy along the banks of the Nile to his pivotal role in liberating the Israelites from the shackles of Egyptian oppression and delivering the divine commandments atop Mount Sinai serves as a cornerstone of belief and inspiration across generations. Moses' life story resonates deeply within the collective consciousness of believers worldwide, symbolizing resilience, redemption, and the enduring power of faith in the face of adversity. As humanity continues to seek clues to unravel the mystery of his final resting place, the quest for Moses' tomb transcends mere archaeological curiosity, reflecting the eternal quest for spiritual enlightenment and historical understanding. Nabi Musa, the Lord will do battle for us. He hold his mighty hand. It is said that because of his mistake of striking his staff for water, Moses was not allowed to enter the Holy Land, and he passed away while the Jewish encampment was masked on the east bank of the Jordan River. To visit the tomb and the truth behind this narrative, Josh Gates visited Jordan as he approached an unexpected site. In the distance, a massive walled compound emerged, bearing the name Nabi Musa, meaning the Prophet Moses. Stepping into this remarkable space, Josh was greeted by Tafik Dadli, an archaeologist and professor of Islamic studies. Expressing the gratitude for his time, Josh seemed to couldn't help but marvel at the spectacle before them. Eager to dive into the mysteries surrounding the end of Moses' story, Josh questioned the location of his burial according to biblical tradition. Tafik explained that Mount Nebo, situated just across the valley and the Dead Sea, in what is now Jordan, has long been associated with Moses' burial, dating back to the construction of a church there in the 4th century. Curious about the archaeological evidence supporting Moses' burial at Mount Nebo, Josh, like any of us, inquired further. Tafik then introduced another perspective rooted in Islamic tradition, highlighting the significant mention of Moses in the Quran, and the belief that he crossed the river to this side where they stood. According to Islamic tradition, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, during his heavenly ascension from Jerusalem, near the Dome of the Rock, saw Moses praying at his tomb, believed to be located on this side of the Jordan River. With conflicting traditions regarding Moses' burial site, 
Josh pressed Tafik for evidence at Nabi Musa. They went downstairs to witness what the Islamic faith contends as Moses' tomb within the mosque's premises. So, okay, if there is a historical Moses, where is this guy? I mean, where, where was he buried? Tomb of Moses. Now downstairs, where Josh and Tafik are standing, is speculated to be the ancient tomb of Moses. Josh seems to be feeling the weight of its history and the mystery that surrounds it. Tafik Dadli, the guide, leads Josh through the stories of the past at Nabi Musa. This place is old enough to be a marvel, goes all the way back to the 13th century. It's amazing to think about how people have remembered Moses for so long, but there's still so much everyone doesn't know. Stories mix with facts, and it's hard to tell what's true. Tafik told the tales that have been passed down for generations. There are a mix of stories people have told each other and things that have been written down. It's like a puzzle where the pieces are made of both history and legend. Nabi Musa used to be just a quiet place where people came to remember Moses, but now it's a bustling spot with visitors from all over the world. People come here to feel close to their beliefs and to remember their journey of faith. But even as we learn more about Moses' tomb, we come face to face with a big question. How do we balance what we can prove with science and what we believe in our hearts? Archaeologists like Tafik study the past, but sometimes some things just can't be explained. For Tafik and others like him, understanding isn't just about digging up old stuff. It's about respecting what people believe and trying to find a balance between what we know and what we feel. As they explored this sacred space, the quest to unravel the mystery of Moses' final resting place took on a deeper significance. In the Palestinian territories at Nabi Musa, Josh found himself amidst a convergence of faith and history, where the narrative of Moses' legacy transcends borders and traditions. The journey to uncover the truth behind Moses' tomb is not merely a quest for archaeological evidence, but a profound exploration of faith, spirituality, and cultural heritage. As Josh left Nabi Musa, he carried with him a sense of wonder and the understanding that some things will always be a mystery. But it's okay, because in the end, what matters most is the journey of searching for truth and finding peace in our beliefs. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. The vanishing of Moses' tomb. However, this is just another narrative in the whole mystery of where Moses is actually buried. It is even speculated that God hid the tomb of Moses. The burial place of Moses has remained a mystery over the centuries, sparking curiosity and intrigue among many. While the Bible doesn't explicitly explain why God chose to keep Moses' burial site hidden, there are various interpretations offered by scholars and commentators. One interpretation suggests that God concealed Moses' body to prevent it from becoming an object of worship. Given Moses' significant role in Jewish history, there was a concern that people might idolize his remains, diverting their focus from God himself. By keeping Moses' burial place unknown, God intended to shift attention toward Moses' teachings and legacy, rather than his physical form. Another perspective suggests that God hid Moses' body to emphasize the importance of spiritual matters over physical ones. By maintaining secrecy surrounding Moses' grave, God wanted to prompt deeper reflection on Moses' teachings and the enduring impact of his actions, rather than fixating on his earthly remains. Despite the lack of clarity regarding Moses' burial place, the Bible describes the circumstances of his passing. Moses died on Mount Nebo, overlooking the land of Moab, and was buried in a valley opposite Beth Peor. However, the exact location of his grave remains unknown to this day. The choice of Moses' burial site, Beth Peor, holds significance in the biblical context. This location served as a reminder of Israel's history of idolatry and the consequences of straying from God's commandments. By burying Moses in Beth Peor, 
God conveyed a powerful message about the dangers of worshipping false gods and the importance of remaining faithful to Him. Overall, while the mystery surrounding Moses' burial place may never be fully resolved, it serves as a symbol of faith, inviting believers to contemplate deeper spiritual truths and trust in the divine wisdom beyond human understanding. Well, in general, religions are known for incorporating a unique landscape features into their own oral tradition, right? In the quest to uncover ancient mysteries and understand the depths of faith. The exploration of Moses' tomb and the enigmatic structure beneath the Sea of Galilee has led us on a remarkable journey. From the tranquil waters of the Sea of Galilee to the bustling halls of Nabi Musa, we have traversed through time and tradition, seeking answers to age-old questions. The discovery of the underwater anomaly in the Sea of Galilee has sparked excitement and speculation, challenging our understanding of history and biblical narratives. Through meticulous research and groundbreaking seismic surveys, we have unearthed compelling evidence of a man-made structure dating back to the Bronze Age. The intricate details of this underwater marvel hint at its significance and purpose, raising intriguing questions about its connection to ancient civilizations and religious legends. As we dive deeper into the mysteries surrounding Moses' final resting place, we encountered conflicting traditions and enduring beliefs. From Mount Nebo to Nabi Musa, the narratives of Moses' legacy transcend borders and traditions, weaving a tapestry of faith and history that captivates the imagination. Yet, amidst the quest for archaeological evidence and historical truths, we are reminded of the limitations of human understanding. The mystery of Moses' burial place remains shrouded in uncertainty, inviting us to ponder deeper spiritual truths and trust in the divine wisdom beyond our comprehension. As we conclude our journey, we are left with a sense of wonder and reverence for the mysteries that endure. Whether buried beneath the waves or hidden in the sands of time, the legacy of Moses continues to inspire faith and curiosity reminding us of the enduring power of belief and the eternal quest for truth. What do you think about the narrative of Moses' tomb being vanished, or if the Nabi Musa is actually where the Prophet is buried? We invite you to share your insights and reflections in the comments section below. And remember, as we continue to explore the marvels of our world, let us stay curious, stay open-minded, and never cease to seek the truth that lies beyond the veil of uncertainty.